It doesn't make the school shootings list, but the 1927 Bath School disaster is actually the deadliest school attack in U.S. history. It was a massacre by a man who was angry with the world and out for revenge. He may have planned his attack for as long as a year, and it's thought that a short circuit is the only thing that saved more than half the school's students. Let's dig into this. Bath Township, located just 10 miles from Lansing, Michigan, was mostly farmland and most of the residents knew each other fairly well. To provide a better education to all of the children of the township, voters approved the creation of the Bath Consolidated School in 1922 to educate students in grades 1 through 12. It was an idea that had been argued about for several years before finally passing. The $43,000 price tag, around three quarters of a million today, would mean a big property tax hike for the folks of Bath. Andrew Kehoe had been an electrical engineer for several years in St. Louis before a head injury put him in a coma for weeks. After he recovered, he moved back to his father's farm. He married Nellie Price in 1912, and they had bought a farm on Clark Road in Bath from a relative of Nellie's in 1919. His neighbors knew Andrew was a dependable and hardworking man. They also knew Andrew had a terrible temper. Arguments over small things would set him off, and he beat one of his horses to death and shot a neighbor's dog when they made him mad. And he was a notorious penny pincher. Andrew Kehoe was elected to the school board as a trustee in 1925, and he reportedly argued against every expenditure for the school, even basic necessities. He also argued often and angrily for lowering the school's taxes. Although he was gaining a reputation as someone who was difficult to get along with, he was appointed as town clerk in 1925 to fill a vacancy. He lost the April 1926 election and took it as the community rejecting both him and his ideas. The election loss is often cited as the straw that broke Andrew Kehoe's back, but he had been in a downward spiral for several years. For one thing, he had severe financial problems. His farm was worth $10,000 in 1922, about $175,000 in today's money, and the taxes imposed for the school went up an incredible 60% by 1926 and Andrew Kehoe could not afford it. He tried to get the value of his property lowered with no success, and then he got behind on his payments. In 1926, foreclosure papers were filed. Neighbors later reported Kehoe stopped working on the farm around this time. He also stopped making both mortgage and insurance payments on the farm. And then his wife Nellie became ill, probably with tuberculosis, and needed to be hospitalized for several times. Costing more money than Kehoe didn't have, neighbors began to worry that Kehoe was planning to take his own life. The Bath School Board hired Kehoe to do some electrical work in the school in 1926, and he had free access to the school over the summer vacation and through the fall. About this time, unknown to anyone, he started buying Pyrotol. This was an explosive widely used at the time, especially by farmers. Kehoe bought a ton of the stuff eventually, but no one knew that. He also bought 900 pounds of dynamite, a little at a time, from different stores, so no one would be suspicious. And dynamite had been stolen from a bridge project nearby, too. No one suspected Kehoe until after the massacre. Even though he wasn't plowing fields, he was very busy on the farm. He cut holes in the fences and piled lumber and metal into the tool shed. He cut off all of his grapevines, then put them back together so no one would notice. And then he cut bark off of trees in what was called girdling, so the trees would die. He bought a rifle, he bought a new set of tires for his Ford truck, and filled the back seat up with junk that would become shrapnel in an explosion. He made bombs with the pyrotol, 
and then put them in the farm buildings and in the house along with piles of dynamite, and he made many trips to the school. Nellie Kehoe had been in the hospital again and was discharged on May 16, 1926. Andrew took her home and killed her sometime before the 18th. He put her body in a wheelbarrow and hid it in the chicken coop. He piled silverware and metal cash box next to his wife. On Wednesday, May 18, 1926, classes at the Bath School started at 8.30 for more than 200 young students. Just before 8.45 a.m., the Kehoe farmhouse and buildings exploded. Neighbors heard it, but it was the debris flying into a neighbor's chicken house that brought everyone running. Someone started fighting the house fire while others crawled through a broken window to search for Andrew and his wife. What they found was dynamite in a corner of the living room. While they took it outside, Andrew Kehoe drove up, stopping just long enough to tell a few of the men they had better head over to the school. Kehoe had set a timer in the school basement made from an alarm clock. It went off at 8.45. The firemen and others who were headed out to the farm heard the huge explosion back in town and turned around, and the townspeople started rushing to the school. Reports of more than 100 people trying to rescue the children within minutes are common. And, of course, mothers were coming looking for their children. Eyewitnesses said that children had been blown into the air and out of the school. Books, papers, debris, and small bodies seemed to be everywhere. During the chaos, a farmer who had started driving back to his farm for rope strong enough to remove the collapsed roof from a pile of children trapped underneath saw Andrew Kehoe driving his truck towards the school, and he said Kehoe smiled and waved at him. Kehoe pulled up in front of the school between 20 and 30 minutes after the bomb had exploded. Coroner's inquest records say he called for the school superintendent to come over to his truck window, and the two men were seen wrestling over what looked like a rifle. And Kehoe's truck blew up sending burning gasoline and shrapnel stored in the back seat as far as half a block away and starting fires on vehicles parked in the streets. Kehoe and the superintendent were killed. Many others were mortally wounded, including an eight-year-old boy who had survived the initial blast, only to be killed by shrapnel from the truck bomb. The local drugstore was turned into a triage center, and hundreds of folks came to help. The town hall was turned into a morgue, the Red Cross responded, and first responders from Lansing and the state police came as fast as they could. Even Michigan's Governor Fred Green came, helping remove debris from the scene. And, as rescuers searched, they came upon a horrific scene. In the South Wing basement, they found 500 pounds of dynamite. It had not gone off when the pile in the North Wing had, probably due to a short circuit. State and local police went out to the Kehoe farm as soon as they were no longer needed at the school. They searched for Nellie Kehoe, but couldn't find her. Her body would stay in the chicken coop for more than a day, with searchers passing by, before anyone realized the charred heap in the wheelbarrow was Nellie. That was not the only horror on this property. All the buildings on Kehoe's farm had been destroyed. In the burn barn, two horses were found burned to death. Kehoe had wired their legs together to prevent them from escaping the fire. And a handmade sign placed on one of the fences said, quote, Criminals made, not born. End quote. More than 50 people testified before a coroner's inquest jury. There was no doubt that Andrew Kehoe had murdered 43 people, including his wife Nellie. With his own death and the later death of another child due to injuries from that day, the official total is 45. The official number of injured was listed as 58, but many walking wounded were not recorded. The Bass School disaster, as it has been called since the day it happened, is the deadliest American school attack to this day. The Bath School Board had the damaged part of the school demolished so it could be rebuilt with donated funds from State Senator James Cousins. During the demolition, dynamite was found in three separate times in three separate areas. Thanks for watching and let us know what you think of this story in the comments. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. 
and you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.